Matthew 3. I greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you Can we say amen? Look at verse 2. And then look at verse 8. Look at verse 2. And look at verse 8. Well, collectively and corporately, and also personally, as a household of faith, we are in a season of a great outpouring. Amen. So I want to highlight those things that most of the time we neglect them and we think they don't serve as triggers because sometimes we could be receiving your word but miss the conditions of the prophetic words. So it's very important that you take it seriously. Especially in the season where we are seeking the Lord. So we'll be looking at genuine keys to personal and corporate revival. Amen. After, before I read this, this text, after 400 years of silence, between the Old Testament and the book of Matthew. 400 years of silence. John the Baptist emerges a prophet of the end of an era and the beginning of another. After strict 400 years of silence. I must also indicate the books that you call Apocrypha. Maybe sometimes I would talk to the reasons why they were added in the Catholic Bible but they were rejected by the Protestant I'll give reasons so you can see why we don't subscribe to the other books I think 12 of them but we maintain the 66 books those books were written during that period where there was no widespread revelation like God was quiet, but people were still recording some details uh, concerning second temple building. And then different group began to emerge historically and also religiously, like the Herodians, the SNS, the, the Pharisees, as different groups that are, when Jesus comes into the picture, these are the groups that will come against his ministry and so on during that time they they did serve some positive and also negative purposes so you could understand just on a spiritual landscape the father the son and the holy spirit are on somehow of a pause spiritually there's no revelation like in the days of Samuel maybe the, the book of Samuel puts it best by saying there was no widespread revelation so God is not speaking God is silent theologically we call this the 400 years of silence and then a prophet born out of a barren womb emerges and when he emerges he picks up the scriptures from Isaiah and he says, I am the voice. In other words, from silence emerges a true voice. He says, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord. The good thing is that when the Pharisees came while John was baptizing, they asked him, are you the one? He says, nope, I'm not the one. He says, there's one who's coming whose shoes I'm not worthy to untie. In fact, John went as far as saying, 
his ministry causes me to decrease even as Siena increases and then he's told them I'm not the light but the scriptures are very clear where even the very same John was a man not or just of God scripture is clear he says he's the man from God because today who is in a Hobanali man of God but a man from God is a different distinction altogether so he emerges as a voice after silence and this is how you know he's the true voice when he rises he points us to the one every true voice must point us to the one and it must admit by way of identity i'm not the one there are some people who like to take the glory he even says to show that his ministry is greater than mine i baptize with water but there's one who's coming after me he baptized with something better the holy ghost and and fire let's look at the place of baptism in your christian work when israel made a transition from egypt to the wilderness they had to face what we call the red sea and they god had to part the red sea asunder so that israel can walk on dry land but the waters were standing as walls as Israel was walking between those water walls. Paul, when he takes that account, he says, actually, they were going through baptism. You would never uh, be accepted in any new thing that God is doing until he washes you. It always, always serves as that. Before you can experience a new place, take a bath. The entire nation, three million people. Even though they saw God destroy the gods of Egypt, because they were still babies, God overlooked their unbelief because their faith was still on a baby stage. And do you know that while you are still a baby, you definitely need a lot of miracles? Or maybe Alim Kutri, Marikita Lethalo says. Think about it. Water turned into blood. All the plagues came into the land, defeating each and every god as a perfect symbol of that key word, Passover. I will pass over you. He defeated every god in Egypt, including Ra, by making sure that darkness hits the land. Ra could not put the lights up. So Mdimu did the first load shedding, a divine. Ra, prove yourself. None of the gods of Egypt, that they were exposed through the plagues, because God was simply saying, prove yourself that you are gods, because you are claiming to be having some form of superiority and authority over the people. So he trembled over them. He did what the Greeks will actually do. He made an open spectacle of principalities and powers as the Almighty God. And he was moving in a wave of the Lord's salvation. So he was delivering Israel. So after so many testimonies, think about that. Miracles can happen in your, in your life, but you are still a slave. The biggest thing is when your status changes, not just manifestations around you. What is big was his salvation, not just only his works. What is big is not just about you seeing his works, you must also know his ways. Because in the, in the place called Egypt, your status has not changed. But you have testimonies. And those testimonies, are not sufficient to help you to cross the Red Sea to change your location. So you must see that there is a place of miracles that is not minimized, but they don't accomplish everything there is under the sun. There is this ultimate miracle that me and you have experienced. And it points back to the issue of Passover and its symbolism as a type, pointing to the fact that our greatest miracle was when we were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son in love. 
to a point that there are something sovereignly God can choose that he will never change in your life but he still has done the greatest thing because little Bible if he did not withhold his son what else he would not have given you and that does not necessarily say and don't hear me that way that does not necessarily say that in your context in your circumstances don't pursue the Lord he might do some wonders that are required in that particular context but at least appreciate that something greater than any other miracle that you can ever ask has already occurred so that the next miracle of your healing of your breakthrough is secondary to the miracle that God has already begun, begun to do so that your worship of God is connected to Passover so you don't say I'm going to withhold my, my worship because I don't have a job yet because he has already done something bigger than you getting a job he has already done something that that proves that he is a loving good God by dealing with the enemy precisely through the redemption plan so there's something to praise God for amen so at the beginning stage when they see the Red Sea as an obstacle because they have nowhere to go and Pharaoh is behind them the Red Sea is before them instead of remembering the miracles they only see the obstacle and the only thing they uphold is to murmur and to complain and quickly Mudima Soka Wisaka you are already saying the garlics were bad actually saying 400 years of slavery is better than me dying here they're actually saying god we don't acknowledge but because god understands that slavery can have such an impact on you he overlooks the fact that you are denying him at this stage and he still goes to his servant that he has anointed let the servant of god do it for you because at this stage your faith is not sufficient to see you through that is why when jesus will come through the gospel he will always say this statement ye of little faith you know what he was saying if you see me present in the flesh right now you should not worry about anything because nothing is impossible for you so he'll always you know rebuke them chastise them for little faith i want you to do something in your walk start appreciating god for salvation I've seen believers backslide, go back to the world because somehow what others are testifying about has not occurred for you. So you are thinking that God has somehow forgotten because it's so easy to have that narrow mind because you have lost sense of a bigger picture. And the bigger picture will not ignore your immediate circumstances. The thing is you should remain focused in glorifying for salvation. And this is what scripture says, seeking first the kingdom of God. And God is not going to do things for you and me at the same time. There's a reason why sometimes you're going to be stretched. There's a reason why your prayers will be heard but not answered. The fact that it was not answered does not necessarily mean it was never heard. And the fact that it was heard is already a breakthrough. If we call it success in prayer, is the fact that God is hearing your prayer. Because it will be redundant for you to come into the place of prayer and your words are just hitting the roof and you don't even believe them yourself. And so, but if God can hear them, then there's a greater chance that he'll definitely answer them. So another thing that you should help yourself with, in as much as we corporately worship God, you must have a personal context of your work with the Almighty God. You must, so that uh, you can begin to trace the movements of God and the dealings of God for your life because I'm here speaking to a number of people right now the message can go many different direction but there will be something that serves as a seed for you that is not necessarily for your neighbor and something can be triggered and activated from a corporate message that uh, causes something that would not necessarily have happened to uh, was going to happen to take place because we don't come just to hear the message we come with the hearing of faith and it causes triggers in the realm of the spirit and the minute you start believing there's a faith connection that causes a corporate anointing to manifest 
and certain things get broken as we adhere to faith as we respond to God. But back into what I, I was saying for babies in the faith. They complained. Okay, God was like, Moses strike the, the sea. He parted it to two. Imagine you are walking on dry land. That's what scripture says. It's supposed to be wet down there, but it's dry. It's like Mudimu Shapa civil engineering in Westrias. And he makes sure the world, I mean, I, I, I can just imagine that some of them could perhaps see a whale passing because the wall set limitation. They could still, still see other animals in the sea. So it was an aquarium of a powerful dimension. As a designer. He's not killing his creation. He's just making way for a greater creation that is made in the image of God. He told that you that when you are made in his image, they are not. So they are paving a way for you as a king to pass. People of covenant are passing on dry land. Mudimu are in order for me to be true to my promise, I can just do anything crazy in your context because I want to be faithful. I told Abraham that your seed will be here for 400 years and after 400 years, they will pass and they will make their way into the promised land. So God is in actual fact faithfully fulfilling his promise. When on Hanauri, it's just your prayers making things happen. And Kimujimu are I'm faithful to the word that I spoke a long time ago, and all I need is an agreement. I just need a generation that will agree with me. And then they will see my glory. That is why faith comes by what? Hearing. What I what what is it that you are hearing? The promises of the covenant. That I will make your name great. I will multiply you. I will bring you to the land. If you believe those things. As the almighty God. I will begin to deal with the obstacles on the way. Put the devil or anything on the way. That stands on me fulfilling the promises. I will make sure that I even have to perform a miracle. Just to prove how faithful I am. So at the end of the day. It's not just about your faith. But about his faithfulness. Even in your walk with God, in terms of holiness, it is not going to be about your works. It's going to be about His faithfulness to offer you salvation that produces true holiness. So this is where we see them as babies then. Please tell your neighbor, I, see, I feel... Please tell, tell, tell your neighbor. Please tell your neighbor. Don't walk by, by sight. Walk by what? May the Lord open the eyes of your faith. I can see the the limitations selling day. I don't know what is it that has been said, but I want you to know that by inspiration there is this level because you have been seeing limitations all the way and you're starting to confess limitation and it is discouraging and you even want to regress and to go back because you feel like Mudimu has set me up for failure. And the truth of the matter is that he hasn't. So please lift up your eyes upon the hills where your help coming from, it comes from the Lord. You must see beyond what the enemy has set as restrictions and God is breaking boundary lines on your behalf. It will happen by faith. And if you walk by faith and not by sight, you start by speaking. Our faith is released through speaking. You need to start saying something different from the situation you're experiencing to speak what you need to see or what God has promised. So if God has promised a baby, speak a baby because you are simply agreeing with the law. If the Lord said, I will give you, I will show you a city whose builder and maker is the Lord. Talk destiny. Say, I have arrived where God wants me to be. Agree with the promises. And when you do so, you are activating the power of God in your circumstances. And sooner or later, sooner or later, the Lord will have to respond in a miraculous way in your circumstances so that truly you can have a testimony. So that God does not become a concept but an experience. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Albertin. Remove.
your natural eye it is an obstacle of what I am doing in the spirit the church is working in the promises not in the circumstances we are not moved by sight we are moved by what? By says there's greater salvation. So actually, we are partnering with God and agreeing with God. And I guess when that happens, it, it releases a stress because all you know that if the man of war leads the army, we are guaranteed the victory. So they parted the Red Sea and they crossed. And guess what happened? Pharaoh and his horsemen, who were intimidating, were thrown into the river. And Israel was preserved. There's something about the water of baptism. While it washes you and causes you to escape, it drowns the enemy. That's what the water of God is doing. It is baptism. It is saying you are clean from the world, but it does not allow the world to pass to the next level. So it becomes a restriction. After this, you are a brand new man. Because that's what the washing is. So God is simply saying you cannot enter a new season without washing your dirty clothes. Wash. And you can see this pattern over all Israel. Red Sea, it was a path. River Jordan, before they entered the promised land, it was another path. It, it, at the swelling of Jordan, when the river was high and dangerous, God said pass. At the Ark of the Covenant, we lead the way. And when you follow that due order, things begin to part. Another person that parted the river was Elijah. These rivers are connected with ancient anointings and graces that gets activated if the people understand the order of what God is doing in their season. And there emerges John the Baptist. He's going to prepare you for the ultimate baptism. Before I introduce Jesus, let's get washed. That's the assignment of the man. And then he is going to actually be the one introducing you to the ultimate baptism. Because this one does not only wash you externally, it washes you internally. He baptizes with the Holy Ghost who indwells you and gives you a new creation. And then with fire that makes sure that you live a sanctified life. So there are three types of baptism, water, Holy Ghost, and fire. In order for you to enter a new season. So food is, where are they, where are you connecting the baby thing? Miriam took a timbre and started to sing after crossing. And started to sing a song that says, the horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. And made declarations that are prophetic that even reveal the name of the Lord. And the Lord is the man of war, and the Lord is his holy name. The other women join. Israel together also join. But here's the problem they are singing the right song on the wrong side. The song is right, but the side is wrong. As Pharaoh was pursuing, and the rest was standing at the world. God was actually saying, I'm evaluating, you are still babies. You were supposed to sing on that side. Not on the other side. When you sing on the other side, it's okay, I still accept your praise. But your faith is still weak. Because faith releases uh, faith. The, the, the strongest thing, the quickest thing that releases faith is praise. Because Praise is an expression of your faith. That is why when they were singing on the days of Joshua, the choir before the army, the Almighty God was able to move in the camp of the enemy and cause them to fight each other. Because all they had to do was to observe due order, stand as an army, because obedience is an, it's always a hot spot for revival. You obey him, then revival comes. So here images John. Are corona, and this is for you personally and the body of Christ. Here emerges John, and as he emerges, this is what he's saying. You want to see the move of God called the Lord Jesus Christ? You want to see signs, wonders? You want to see what he has promised Israel? 
the one the prophets were prophesying about that he's coming and now that he's here you want to see the total transformation of the world you must take your season to wash seriously how do you do it spiritual and guess what message he preaches when other people are preaching about things and things to receive he rises as a voice and says repent for the kingdom of God is at hand that word is at hand it's actually saying the kingdom of God is here it is only activated by those who receive the message of repentance in other words God is simply saying this you cannot come into this revival with that attitude you cannot come with this revival with your dirty clothes you cannot experience this revival while you are thinking the way you were thinking yesterday you can't not have separation and consecration and think that you will sustain the impact of revival if the old attitude is there that is why was all right we come every sunday we preach we are just dealing with the mind that does not want to change the heart is willing i'm telling you people are willing you call an honor prayer they come they cry kneel they prostrate because the heart is willing but when god starts saying stop watching netflix the mind is in trouble already when god starts saying this is what hinders my presence in your life then there's a fight especially because now you are paying this and god is helping you already because this separation is going to say cancel this subscription and cancel it and stay in my prayer and all the messages are the same i promise you you are going to the next revival the other preacher will be put in the other way but we will be saying the same things separate yourself so obedience in this regard is something that we hear but i don't know what happens with us we don't respond with eagerness we don't take it that this is this is what the lord is saying and his agent is critical i can just imagine somebody are i want an encounter from the lord and then the lord brings that encounter but it comes with the message repent people want goosebumps uh -huh, let's admit it we want can I prophesy we want speak to my situation and that comes after repentance repent so that times of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord Mamir, change the way you have been doing things you are a prisoner of your own habits change your daily routines because they keep you in captivity to the world you have become the way a slave to the world and actually you are hooked and you are not even aware and it's only a dog on a leash for some time you feel like you are free until the limitations because it's very good at leash it feels like you are free but something has you in captivity and no wonder our songs are in a revival but Runa, we have not arrived our song says i give myself away but the singer has not given themselves away the question is who will then respond with the utmost sincerity hence liberal energy so what's are every time we hear the word we hear the word it falls on different grounds huh? stony ground hard grounds by the wayside not on fertile ground because we are not ready most of the time when god speaks we're some, somehow waiting for akzibi when it's too late when it's too late and we feel then we want to come rushing and actually it is too late seek the lord while can still be found and I'm puts it in our hearts, all of us, seek me, seek me, seek me, pursue me. And the enemy is going to put some pressure as well. He's going to make sure that we have distractions. But here's the thing that has made believers not to progress in their walk with God. We just don't have 
total commitment. We have a half baked, half commitment, and it gets proven along the way. It was not genuine. It was because the word revival is a buzzword and it's something trending. I feel like I need to be a partaker of it. But God does not know your commitment in private. Seek me in that secret place. He knows. Do you know that, Pastor? You don't need a whole lot of church, but coming to church, you must. You need a whole lot of God so that your church can have a whole lot of God. All, all you need is. Is, is to have him and when you have him you will have all things Mara, somehow our habits, our attitudes our perspectives our opinions they always serve as a hindrance and a mudim is traditional but he keeps saying the same things wash, clean repent love me and then we decline wash, clean Repent, love me, love others. God is still working on the basic. Read the word, pray, walk in holiness. It never changes. Those things have not changed. Mara, when you check your level of commitment to reading the word, to praying, to walking holy, then that is actually where you see, Jorge, actually my problem is here. We have half-baked commitments. It's like the God of this world somehow has not has has put that thing in our perception hore yeah go all the way but not too much just go and worship god for three days pharaoh who said that yeah don't don't go too far just hold that's what the enemy is actually saying when god at this particular stage and you can be saying so many things my family is going through a mess my husband is divorcing me i'm experiencing this and that just draw close just come near that is a divine task you don't come in the flesh and show up and you are you don't come in the flesh and show up and you are accepted you have to go through stuff to just take a step towards the almighty and God must be the one assisting you. Actually, you know, I think more so we should be praying. That song is saying, Give us that desire. Because actually, our sinful nature, in terms of the flesh that we carry, actually battles the things of the spirit. The things of the spirit are at war with the things of the flesh. And if we can admit the flesh wins most of the time. We might act up or flesh is not winning. But I wanted to show you when the book of Leviticus was putting a separation concerning the life of a priest in that Levitical order. God had to release strict instructions that were more external. This man is not going to do this. He's not going to do that. This man belongs to me. He would not have learned. Did you see? Sacrifice is serious. This man can't do this and can't do that. And how check restrictions, restriction. And then thinking the commandments of God are grievous. And it is the Holy Spirit that makes them. Okay. If you have the Holy Spirit, the commandments of God are not grievous. In fact, yesterday, I was reading a portion of Exodus 20. And the Lord revealed, Are, do you know, Hore, before I said, thou shalt not have any other gods, I said I remind, I, I, I spoke a reminder in verse 2. You must check it. Or I remind you, I took you out of the land of Egypt. Come on, Soma. The commandments are not released because give the obligations to fail. I am showing you, Hore, I loved you first before I instructed you. Before I commanded you, I showed you my love. I took you out of the land. So remember what the God who tells you don't do this. It's a God that is actually saying, my commandments are meant for your salvation. I know how I've created you. I know how I've designed you. So when I say thou shalt not steal, it is for your health spiritual. It is not spoken as Mutimu putting restrictions, don't a system of do and don'ts. It is for your safety. 
because they were spoken from a God whose nature is love and goodness. So he shows you love and goodness. And the first thing before he commands you, he reminds you of what he has done. That is good and loving towards you. And the more you hear messages like this, ne? the more the enemy is going to try to put some pressure on you. In times when you're supposed to read, you start sleeping. And that's all the more reason you need to understand you are in trouble. And until you recognize that you are in trouble because there's a level of spiritual slumber that is coming in and that is actually causing you to get into the place where you become complacent and you start thinking, I'm an honomali, maybe God does not want. And then the enemy has you. And to tell the truth, it's not a difficult thing. When, you have, when God helps you with it, you begin to discover. Maybe he's simply asking you to read a chapter a day. But when Christians get into the zeal of the Lord without knowledge, they exercise zeal without knowledge or they have a, a knowledge without zeal. That's the problem. We are caught in the imbalance all the time. That with zeal, they put so much zeal in this thing. And God is patiently working. But now they are on the rush. And when they don't see immediate change and signs and manifestation, they quickly let go, thinking, no, this thing is for some people, not for me. And already you have discouraged yourself spiritually. Pastor, so this thing is not a hundred kilometer. It's not even a competition. It's a marathon. You are in a race. You prepare yourself in the race. And you are not too late. Understand, the minute you start, make sure you finish. Many believers have started but they have not finished things. Of little faith. What I rebuke you. I rebuke you. Ye of what? Of little faith. Your commitment in God says so. Your dedication in God say so the way you view things say so and the enemy has you in prison in a wrong perspective and you are starting to think God on negative terms sooner or later a decline sooner or later a falling away and a mamela utabuli right or God is not God is, is not fair and you have a right to even say church head mark this time pointed to God urung hetile Let's talk faith. Ne? And when we talk faith, we should be able to acknowledge this. You are in a journey of faith. My problem, your problems are not the same. I have to believe God differently. There are similarities. But I have to believe God differently. My challenges are calling upon me to go to God. And I have to understand, okay, this one here is saying no. This one is saying here, yeah, press. This one here, I'm still seeking. This one here humbles me. This one here encourages me. And all of that, when I look at the wall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, I understand that, do you know, that all those people, they never received the promise. All they, pro they got was a good report. They never saw what God promised them. None, not, like, not a single promise. They, because God was saying, they will never have a promise without us. God was simply waiting for us. So, guess what? The people who did not believe, who were not even born, me and you Gentiles, were the ones given the promise. We were given that promise, the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's what the, the promise was. Do you know that there's no any other promise? The seed of a woman will crush the head of the serpent. So our promise is not material things, spiritual things first. And then, when the promise is released, then it will put some circumstances in place. Because it's the king born here, and he's born, he comes with the kingdom, and he sets some environments and things in order. Guess what they received? You read it yourself. After it gives you a description of faith, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then it says in verse 2, by faith, 
the elders received a good report. Where's the promise? Dolon. In other words, before I appropriate the promise, as I believe, God is going to show me that he is with me. And there are things that he's going to do, even if he has not given me the main thing. So, those things are called the good report. There's a good report. Whose report, as I ask, would you believe? Amen. It's easy to even make this whole thing of believing some spiritual exercise. And you are just checking whether it works or not. And if it doesn't work, then you have plan B. When God never had any other plan. It's only plan A. When you ask him again, after things have not worked, he's still saying, no, plan A. When you feel like you are failing, he's still saying, no, the, the only plan that works is plan A. Because he knows the end from the, from the beginning. So he knows this is the only thing that works. Let me take you to the movies. Let me take you to the movies. Infinity War. Avengers. Doctor Strange weighed different options on how to win this battle. And there was only one. And that one must be kept a secret. Because if the enemy can know it, then it will never happen. And then, the next Avenger, we see how it worked. It paid out, but from a point of predestination. You know, God foreknew, foresaw, and predetermined that. Mudimu has a plan. You can discourage yourself in your walk with the things that are happening in this world that are so ungodly. We even actually crying for ungodly things. Are you aware? We're crying for wicked things. Give me what? Eh. Hey. I'm so celebrating Mudimu for this salvation. Ribisa, the joy of salvation. Where you can even say, you know, Lord, I don't have this, but I have you. But that sense of having you will immediately resolve. My man, he would never leave you unattended. David says, I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. But also balance many other afflictions of the righteous. But don't end there. The Lord delivers them out of, of them all. So he will deliver you. So get into God's program, God's timing. Have a chilled relationship with God. Enter his presence uh, not as a person who is seeking a God who does not want you. You seek a God who is already embracing you. And start enjoying fellowship. And soon the things that you are desperate about, you start valuing his absence because it draws you more closer to him. And you start interpreting things differently. And guess what? Sooner or later you are washed. You are cleansed. And then you realize you are not only repenting here or just hearing repentance. You are also producing fruit of repentance. I promise you, you can speak revival, preach revival, announce revival until he takes you through the process of repentance. There will never be a refreshing. Revival begins with repentance. And uh, about the way that I'm, I'm saying it, I, I, I'm making sure it hits the heart. It, it, it reaches that place where you will have to reflect after this. Ponder and look at your life and say, Mudim, give me a repentant heart. You realize that I don't have that heart. I still want what the enemy wants. Given the opportunity, I will take that. Given the opportunity, I will do that. Give me the heart for repentance. I want, if you are repentant, you can do it genuine. And I'm not doing it because you're the blessing. I'm doing it because I'm commanded. I'm doing it because it's, it's seasonal. I'm doing it because it's obedience. And I'm doing it because he activated the interest and the desire for it. I'm doing it because this is what he seeks to accomplish in me. You know that, how deep this thing is? Okay, go once, but I want to how intense this thing is. A man like Judas can have a pastor like Jesus. Ne? Be 
chosen, be appointed, cast out devils, be appointed as a treasurer, and still get dissatisfied with God. Let me explain to you what it, what it means to be called the son of prediction so that the scriptures can be fulfilled. That, that word, the son of perdition, so that the scriptures can be fulfilled, speaks about someone that was reserved for condemnation. Eternal damnation. Do you understand it? You have two verses that speaks about Judas. It says he hanged himself, and then the other one, Eri, uh, his bowels burst asunder and so on. But in order for you to understand the gospel, Zachary is same same story, different perspectives, brought by different parts. So sometimes in order for you to make sense of it, you must get two different parts to make the whole. So another one was saying the guy hanged himself. And he keep pass over. Ne? Pass over, you're not supposed to have a dead body there. So I hang in Gaiwa. So you have two accounts that seems like they contradict. All the contradictions in scripture, they are apparent contradicting but not genuine contradiction if you are a student of the word. They, it seems like they contradict but they don't. The accounts of how many people saw him, who saw him first in the resurrection, they seem like they contradict but they don't. Because he issued a mention without timelines. So we must piece the pieces of the puzzle together to get the greater picture. And it takes you to labor for you to come with the harmonization of the gospel story. Four perspectives, same story. One gospel, not four. So, I just want you to imagine. Do you know, Jorge, even if Jason Atile, let's say na Kije again and again, Let's say yes or no. You will still receive me in that. Ah, the sermon was great. Wow. Will I hit some nerve there? The man of God was like, he did say something. But commitment on. That is why, have you, have you ever seen that all the people that God used are the ones he chose? It's not the ones who were willing and available. Because when you come with that, you will think, I found God. You'll be telling us, No, no, God finds you. That's humility. Even if it's just to call you, how feel like I want calling? What's that? Just call me. And whatever you call me for, that will be an honor. He must become first in everything. Okay, I just chance on one point, Basil One. I'm supposed to give you at least about seven. But I want to stay there and close here. Repent. Repent. And after some time, I won't say immediately. Certain things will start making sense. Cut away excess flesh. Kiss circumcision. Cut. Cut the flesh that is not needed. One cousin, uh, the wife of uh, the wife of this prophet, the wife of uh, Moses, the wife of Moses, Utsiba language covenant. The baby is born. It's day number eight. Covenantal Abraham said, on the day the baby must be circumcised. God was even willing to kill Moses, the deliverer. Ah, that woman and guy knife are you bloody husband and he she makes sure that she spills blood in that house to save the maid seat here's another interesting thing when a woman does an act that saves the male seat Luna are believing on women preachers if you don't believe in women preachers go fair go you only need to read one letter of the book of Romans and then study the life and uh, and uh, nature of this lady, Barinki Phoebe. She was sent 
by Paul the Apostle as an envoy to go and read the letter to the church that the apostles could not go into at the time. The letter was written by Tertius but dictated by Paul. Paul is the author, Tertius is the writer, but Phoebe is the envoy. This is an apostolic letter that deals precisely with the issues of the gospel and our salvation. It is highly theological. In fact, the recommendation in order for you to understand justification and salvation, uh, you must read the book of Romans. He's saying things to the Gentiles and to the Jews there. And uh, he's going to deliver a very important message as an apostle to the Jews and the Gentiles. As an apostle to the Gentile, reaching out to them. Now to show, to show that this thing is real. The apostle, as he was working in the company of Silas, Silas could do that. As he was working in the company of Timothy, Timothy could do that. As he was working in the company of Stephanas, they have done that, taking offerings from there, taking letters and all of them. And he has been working with other houses, the house of Chloe, the house of a woman. And it's, it's the lady that reported the problems. And Paul could take the message from her as credible, not as gossip, or the affections there. Now, he is entrusting a woman of stature by the name Phoebe, who is going to be entrusted with taking the letter. He's taking the doctrine, the revelation. This woman is handling the scroll and he's traveling with the scroll. And here's the practice on when you become an apostle envoy. You need to uh, go to the church, read the letter. Ne? You need to sit. Ne? You need to sit and then you are going to read the letter. You are not adding, you are not subtracting. And you call, and then you tell me that's not teaching. The woman is sitting. This is Paul the Apostle. Not of men, not by men, but by the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's reading? The one entrusted with the letter. No one else is entrusted with the letter because they can tamper with the content. So the one that Paul has chosen is the one that is going to preserve the trustworthiness and the authenticity of what was recorded without anyone interfering with what was written. Then she reads. She's going to read 16 chapters while the church is silent and listen. The woman is doing that. But here's an interesting part. Perhaps you didn't see it. You who does not want a woman to preach. Here's an interesting part. When the congregation wants clarity, she's well versed to give an explanation. And that is actually where teaching and instructions occurs. So you must be careful that when scripture presents Jewish tradition and culture, you do not uphold it as universal principles, commands and instructions from the scripture. Simply because you cannot handle a skirt, I would rather have a woman who knows the verse than a trouser that knows nothing to speak to me. Amen. Because interestingly, it's amen and ali lean training. The order of the family and order of ministry. But what I'm saying to you, please, in this fallen world, it's not easy to repent. You keep on doing what the Israelites were doing, or up and down. last statement I anoint you like Samson that through your physique your, the power of God can be made manifest ne? the power of God can just boom with this guy Pelane, you can cook at the gates of the Philistines Samson can deal with things and do exploits but here's the problem because because you are not um, have dealt with the issues on a new creation. Okay, Corona different from some so Corona a new creation. Mare bona re mudimu utu it is something moen it also good is Arbona man, you will love Philistine women. Who anointed Marurata Basadi Baba Philist. He never left it. He said born a wena anointed mar. 
and a mudiman that's ever for a motor wizard. Jim Sad. So you should spend your days asking for grace for what he has indicated as a weakness to be preserved from it. So Limudimu and Zeswan are a new creation, are a new anointing. Marai is a show for the sinful nature is not taken away. So that if it is true that you have a new creation, it can be proven by silencing the flesh. So you're going to work, Baba. And I, uh, salvation is easy, easy John. That is why there's that verse. Others don't really understand. You are working your salvation with what? With fear and what? And trembling. Have you ever seen? If you can stand tomorrow, Monday, and say, Lord, I'm going to be holy. <laughs> Tuesday will show you flames. You start feeling funny. Because you have activated things without grace. You should approach those things from a point of grace. Not with human confidence. That's why even Satan knows. If actually, even Peter knows that the Lord has prayed for you. It is the prayers of our intercessor in heaven and the Holy Spirit interceding through us that are going to cause you to image as the mighty great man. My man, no one, I repeat, no one will be great in the kingdom of God without God's approval. You can pray all the prayers you want. God has order. Has a in a place, he'll always put you down until the right time. From a Calvinist point of view, in terms of sovereignty and suffering, God does not only allow things to happen, He even causes them to happen. Amen. You know what? So that in all things He can have all the glory. Yeah. Ankile Satan as a dog on a leash say bite her. The instruction is a bite. And how do I blame? What's happening with him? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? So, how can I humble in your Christian life? He's transcendent. If Habata gives, it's a, it's a theological term that means even if God chooses not to be concerned about us, there will still be no fault. He's transcended. He's above his creation. He can leave us unattended. We can kill ourselves, bomb ourselves, do stuff. That's why God can kill you, but he's not a murderer. You are not dealing with some concept. You are dealing with nature. And you cannot run away from it. You feel it in your spirit. There is that innate thing that God has put in your heart that there is God in the world. And he's supreme, he's eternal, he's mighty. What does that teach me? Tsaba mudim. Oban, he can give you riches now and take them away. Tsaba mudim. Because he can keep you in the dungeon and still say, praise me. And there is no, no Judah taking you out of the pit says, praise me. He can keep you in the room of prayer and not make you a popular preacher. Arwe now are now the only thing I will allow you to so and when my salvation comes, you will see the salvation of the Lord. But that's all it is. You will never be a Paul. You will never be known with greatness. Or when you are the greatest expositor of the word. But man, can I certain the limitations? Are uh, uh, I choose kings? I raise them out. I put them down. Uh, I decide. I've decided this day. I'm deciding the day to come. So do yourself a favor. Acknowledge me because things might turn without any preparation on your side. Remember COVID? It just went bam. theological. Why COVID and stuff like that? We have preachings. Even if it was caused by the hand of men, I allowed it and I caused it and through it I will accomplish my righteousness. Nothing happens unless you are deciding. He's he everything that happens, he follows. No, he knows. 
he calculates he can even decide and say the promises are I want my children to marry Mar Arko and I don't want to marry And all he's doing, all, all he's doing, are over to seek me until I change my mind. Harry created a doctrine of changing God's mind. Harry preached, Harry Kusa and Kibatubana the testimony, even though I felt that the Almighty was against me. But in the fullness of time, he showed up and ensured that Elizabeth is barren and John the Baptist was born. We thought this thing is impossible. Sarah, for 25 years, Mudimu, I too late fell. Armar, they promised them. I don't care if your body is deteriorating. I don't care that you are aging and you are past stages. Some menopause. Tell the doctor and everyone, Mar, you are going to give birth to Isaac at the age of 100. Imagine. Ule Musad, Una 99, or report a pregnancy, or a pastor. We are expecting a baby. Kirin Mukhunu Akereg, expecting a baby. Hanya Narishabar Remar Karwar Embaraza Makoko, who come up pregnant to Honayano. And one was Kavanali complications are in Antiwana who represent our redemption. For there is nothing impossible with God. There are some things that God. God can do all things, but there are some things that God just won't do. So, let us have a hand here. Now, let us come to a look and that. Let us have a thing here. Reverence. Amen. And it happened. We are supposed to be. I got stopped. We would be able to notify. We disparate. All the believers are not right with a sense of entitlement. This is who I am in Christ. Are you right? <laughs> you have this in Christ. But Christ is mine also. You, you're not just going to turn things around you see, as you please. Salvation on the pages of the Bible. How be a living relationship between you and God. Let the scriptures that we are reading every day, they must start speaking transformation, instruction. They must become a living word. So as a warning, please, it's time to seek the Lord. So stop doing silly things like sin. It's time to seek the Lord. This season, find yourself on his knees, on your, on your knees. And whatever is selection time. And how to let you empty, empty. You don't even have the little oil. Just the little oil. You are like you are like the ten virgins. reject. Never. I want to make sure there's something you have. Your commitment to us. And, and, and this is not works. I'm not talking about works. I'm talking about that loving commitment. Your relationship with God is in good times, man. It's fresh. It's cool. And God is happy with you. So if there's a boyfriend that is illegitimate in this season, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bind them. I wonder why it is. No, I'm talking about the one that, whom the Lord has not brought. I want to own manufacturer with your own strength. Google manufactured him. Facebook manufactured him. Instagram manufactured him. And the Lord did not send him. What's up? They know it. They just want to nyala. <laughs> you even know it when you are disobeying. No, no, but I can't really scale and lean yale strong. Yeah, don't be ashamed. Lean yale. Mara, a simple instruction. Please clean up your house. Please put your house in order. Please make sure you repent. Because the Lord is visiting households of faiths. He's visiting the saints equally so. 
and he's declaring favor. He will give you what is befitting and he will actually do it more. He's going to give you stuff you don't deserve. But all I'm asking you, seek the Lord and repent. Find your neighbor for prayer. Let's do so. Just in the groups of two or three, I want us to, to pray. Paul made it through the prayers of the saints. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. For his strength is made perfect in my weaknesses. Father, we release the grace this afternoon to seek you, to pursue you, to run after you, to become the God chasers. We pray for grace, mighty God so that we can walk in obedience, our hearts willing and our minds ready without protesting to follow you and to know you, King of glory. We pray for one another and we are asking you to position us correctly. Help us to have the posture that is willing and able because the flesh is weak, yet the spirit is willing. I pray for the energizing work of the Spirit, the strengthening work of the Holy Spirit to enable every vessel to be pleasing unto the Lord. This is a day of your pleasure. You are the goal of this seeking. You are the goal of this encounter. You are the priority now. And we ask that you may give us a great supply of grace through the supply of the Spirit so that we can please you more and more and more and more. You said if we separate ourselves, you will receive us. Help us, Father, to do complete consecration as you sanctify us. I pray, Father God, as well, that nothing should be missing and nothing should be broken or nothing should we be withheld from any believer under the sound of my voice that is due to them in this season. Let every good thing fall into their lap. Let them experience the hand of the Lord and the blessing of the Lord. In this day of great in gathering, in this time of great festivity, in these days of gladness, we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name that the anyone who deserves favor in Jesus' mighty name, can they have a great amount of what they don't deserve? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we magnify your holy name, that your spirit is moving favorably in this house, taking care of us as your little ones. Almighty God, we bless your name. In Jesus' name, even as you move, manifesting over physical needs, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for a testimony. You are our greatest testimony in salvation. And we thank you for the fact that your works are finished. They can never be repeated. You are full of grace, truth, and love. In Jesus' name, let the miracles occur. In Jesus' mighty name, in an unprecedented scale. In this church, in Jesus' name, amen.